Hey everybody, uh, Ewok Hugs here. It's been quite some time since I did my last tutorial. Um, basically, uh, what happened in the past uh, few weeks, I think, uh, iOS 7 became open to the public, and along with that came a new Xcode update, um, which makes our app look like this. Um, now it has all these fancy blue buttons as opposed to like the round rect rounded rectangle old disgusting looking buttons now we have all this futuristic style stuff um but because of this update i noticed that i really want to get rid of this status bar up here because it's it's a little bothersome uh, it's not doesn't flow well with everything i guess I guess we could shift everything downward, but it's just easier to get rid of that for right now. Um, so you used to be able to get rid of this programmatically. Um, I'm going to show you, just show you the line of code if you haven't updated your Xcode on how to do that. And there's an entirely different way on if you did update your Xcode, and I had to go and look it up because I had no idea. Um, anyways, so the way you used to be able to hide. Um, to hide that status bar with all the previous Xcodes. Uh, UI application shared app location set status bar hidden to yes with animation no. Uh, that line doesn't work for iOS 7. Um, so what we're going to need to do for those who have updated is calc-info.plist in the supporting files and uh, hit that add button. And then it's going to be view controller base status and um, set the, the boolean value to no. Go ahead and run that again. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, there's no, uh, no status bar anymore and it kind of just like faded out. Um, Anyway, uh, let's continue on with this tutorial now that we've went over all of that. Um, where we left off last time is we created all the buttons, and now we just need to figure out uh, how, what happens when one is clicked, or how do we know which one is clicked, essentially. So we'll do number selected first, since it's a little bit easier and less time consuming. Um, Basically, what we're going to want to do first is create a couple of NS strings, and we'll call this one uh, button value. We'll define these in a second. NS string, uh, say, store string. Oh, this one's better not say, because that's implying uh, they'll be there forever. Okay. Uh, button value, we'll set that equal to sender um, title. Hello for state? No, just how for state. Um, you uh, control state normal. Okay, uh, I'll ex this will all kind of make sense after I finish this uh, this whole method, and I'll explain it after I finish it really quickly uh, because I think you guys will get it as we're going along. Um, so, but if you don't, don't worry, I'll explain it after, it's just going to be nice, it'll be a lot easier to explain it once all of this is typed up. So we're going to set i equal to 0, i is less than 10, and i plus plus. So we're just going to create a for loop, uh, right below this for loop we're going to use our store string, a string, we're going to set that equal to uh, ns string string my strong string with format okay there that's that's the right value for them. um display dot text um, comma Like I said, I'll explain all this in a second. Uh, then what we're going to need to do is throw in an if statement there. And then we're going to say if uh, button volume 
is equal to stream um, as string string and this string string with format and I'm blanking on all these uh, little uh, Objective C uh, things. I don't even know what they're called right now. I'm just really tired. Um, but yeah, I'm just blanking on all these formats. With D is basically an integer. At at sign is a string, I believe. But um, anyways. After this, we're just gonna, uh, we're gonna say display dot text equals store string. Okay, so that's it for this method. As you can see, it's pretty easy. Um, so I'll go ahead and explain all of it really quickly. Um, so basically, we're creating two NS strings. One's called button value, one's called store string, obviously. Um, button value is grabbing what, um, okay, so up here in the add buttons, we, uh, we action at select or number selected for control events, you, uh, touch up inside. Um, anyways, it's basically saying send whatever button is being, uh, UI control event touch up, send whatever button is being touched up inside. That sounds terrible. Um, send the number selected for that down to whatever method it is, and it, for the method we did, we did number selected. Um, so as you can see, it's kind of just like a loop-de-loop -loop thing. Um, store string, we're just setting that to nothing for now uh, because we add this to it later. Okay, so for the for loop, what it does is, is it goes through all the possible numbers that it could be which in this case 10 so 0 through 9 um, and then as it's going through it's checking to see which one of them was pushed like we got from up here so uh, anyway so we're setting store string and a string string with format uh, display.txt comma i um, basically it's just saying if it hits that string store it and then kind of just do like basically what I just explained find find whatever string was hit based on what's being sent down um, and then yeah so then if button value is equal to string and a string string with format um, present D uh, I display dot text equals store string wait a second why am I hitting Okay, um, honestly, I'll think, I think it'll work without this line of code. I, I'm not entirely certain, but I don't see why we would necessarily need that. Okay, we do need that, apparently. Um, got a crash error. I think that has to do with me taking out. Okay, this, um, this line of code, uh, just kind of lets it display the buttons up there because it's already in use. It's not already in use. Okay. Uh, so if we go ahead and run this again, yeah, the buttons pop up there now. So uh, as you can see, it's a pretty pretty fancy thing here. Um, none of the operation buttons work, and we'll go over that next episode. Slightly more code intensive, but that's about it. Um, anyways, back to this store string. Basically, we're setting this empty value equal to the display dot comma text to i, and then we're setting the display text equal to uh, i or whichever one was selected. So we're setting this one so as this once empty value to the display dot text and i and then we're displaying the text as um, 
store string is being displayed to the to the bar up top, the type bar, and um, only if button value is equal to string, only if the button value is equal to whatever number was on the button that was pushed. Uh, that that really doesn't make sense. Um, hopefully you guys kind of get it. Honestly, I can't think of a better way to explain it, but um, in my mind it just works, I guess. Sorry. Um, so that's, uh, that's what we're gonna go with, I guess. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Next time we'll get started on Operation Selected. Uh, and I think we should be able to finish this all up next time. We're also getting rid of all this code next time. So, yeah, anyways, hope you enjoyed today's tutorial, and see you next time.